uh, if having three children of your own isn't hard enough, over the past 35 years, Andy Hyder has opened her home to foster children, which is, I always believe, God's work. And yeah. uh, she's done it not to one, not to five, not to ten, not to a hundred, but to a hundred and 50 foster children. Yeah, and she's been honoured with an MB for her services, quite rightly. Uh, she's here now with her son, Ben, who actually nominated her, I believe, Ben. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> um, so you would have... You've got three children of your own, Andy. Three sons, yeah. Three sons, uh, Ben being one of them. So you grew up amongst the foster children. Yeah. What did you make of it when you were small and seeing all these children coming through your home? Well, we didn't start till I was about 12. Yeah. Um, so it was always teenagers. Um, and I, I guess I went in with an open mind and, you know, we were behind Mum, my older brother Adam, younger brother George, we were all kind of with it. Yeah. Uh, and we learned along the way. It and was... were there ever times when you went, oh, another one I have to give up my bedroom or...? Oh, uh, there are always times you do that, but, <laughs> the, but you always saw the bigger picture, you know, and, and life was just busy and exciting, so... Yeah. And you were a single mum while you were doing this, Andy. Yeah. What made you want to start fostering? I mean, you had three children of your own. I'm sure they were a handful, three boys. Uh, what made you want to foster other children? It, it's very different from adoption, where you possibly are growing your family. As you said, I have three sons already, so I wasn't wanting to grow my family. But I did. I grew my heart. Mm. <laughs> um, and I just can identify still. Don't you remember your teenage years? And the fab fabulous side of it, but also the angst as mm. well. Yeah. Um, and so when I saw this advert for fostering teenagers in particular, mm. That was what appealed to me. Andy, I just that, wanted... that can often be the toughest years yeah. for, yes. for youngsters. And that's that's how I got into it because they had introduced a scheme for specifically fostering teenagers um, because nobody wanted the ones with challenging behaviour. Yeah. And but you were I doing did. that. I mean, obviously you had your sons, but they were young, like Ben said. Um, and doing that as a single parent, did, were you not worried that you wouldn't have backup? That, that that all the responsibility was on you? No, it's not like that at all. I mean. They're asking you to look after other people's children, so it's really important that you've got backup, as you say. Mm. So I don't do it on my own. I have a team around me, and, yeah, that, that makes a lot of difference. There's always somebody there. Yeah. What satisfaction do you get when, you, when these teenagers, some you said quite damaged, challenging behaviours? Mental health problems, yes. all sorts. Um, but you what thought this was your duty, didn't you? You, yeah. you think you had a sign to do all of this? No, I don't. <laughs> you were destined. What's this sign? I don't know. Um, no, no, I think I fell into it mm. accidentally. I, I would say I probably fell into it, and then found that I enjoyed what do you mean? it. How can you oh, fall into that accidentally? Because it's... literally, a, a bookmark. Yeah. fell out and I was in the library, a bookmark fell on the floor. It was advertising a scheme for fostering... Tea. It was called Teen Care yeah. and it was for fostering children with challenging behaviour. Oh, well, I'll have that. I'll have a go at that. <laughs> yes. she, she was so good at it. Yeah. That was, that what, was how What she made fell her so it. good at it, though? And you, you witnessed, you, you observed her with these children. Yeah, I think, I think um, like Mum said, she loved her teenage years and mm. she was able to try and uh, bring that kind of joy and love to the kids. Mm. So, you know... I, how can you fail if all you're trying to do is make people happy? And do you believe that love heals all? I think it's certainly a starting point. Mm. And for the, the, the majority of the kids probably that I've looked after, they've not experienced it. Mm. Um, and the, the, the most important thing, I suppose, is that they're also challenging me as a foster carer, mm. so they're going to throw all the, all the stuff that they can at me. Um, and so in the beginning, I felt that I was... Or at the start of any new placement, I'm just sort of holding them because mm. I can't really work with them because there's too much going on. They're like a tightly wound up spring. And as you can just gradually see them starting to relax, I think when they realise that they've done this and they've done that and I haven't given up and they haven't gone out mm. the door and they, uh -huh. I'm still there... But so you're, you're concentrating on them, but, Ben, from your point of view, are you ever feeling, oi, mm. you know, we're here, mm. we're your real kids, mm. what no, about us? No, we, we all gained from foster care. I mean, I've got more brothers and sisters than you can <laughs> dream Imagine. of. Yeah. And, and friends, you know, they're not, they're not just mm. family, they're friends. So mm. we all gained, you know, we're all the people we are today because we learn from every single one of them. So. I mean, people always talk about children really want boundaries. Mm. Um, so how do you create those boundaries? Because I'm presuming there's an element of tough love involved mm. somewhere mm. with children with challenging behaviours mm. and which and then your sons probably are part of that household where there have to be rules and boundaries. Mm. Mm. I mean Eamon's quite right because if looking back obviously now I'm sort of reflecting because I'm going to stop fostering in the summer when I'm 75. Um, You're 75? Yeah. No. 
Yeah, of course. And <laughs> you're only just stopping as well. Yeah. 35 wow. years. It's obviously, obviously kept well, you young. You'll have, you'll have things to do, you'll have time on your hands then. And uh, there's your friend Lynn in Ibiza. Yeah? <laughs> Lynn's not too well. And you haven't been able to go out and see her. Yeah? You're but thinking, where am I going with this? Yeah? Where are you going, Eamon? Where am I going with this? <laughs> uh, well, what has happened is we have actually arranged uh, for you to go for a week uh, to stay in Ibiza. No. Uh, yes, yes. No, no. And um, that is courtesy of Tui Sensatori. That's what I was mixing up with the last guest yes, there, right? Yes, that's why I was going, shush, that's another yes, that's surprise another one that's coming. coming. To be sensatory, a week stay for you in Ibiza, for you and Lynn uh, to get together, uh, hopefully when Lynn's feeling, feeling well. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah, that well, that's nice? the first oh, thing. Amazing. Yeah, good. Well, we thought you that's deserved that's a treat. Thank you so much. Not at all. deserved a treat. Oh, no, he's that. crying. Look, everyone's oh. crying today. <laughs> oh, my we goodness, I should have these tissues. Oh, bless. Uh -huh. Oh, I you can't thank very you enough. proud of you. You must be very proud of your mum if it's yeah. bringing tears to your eyes. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, the, the outpouring of emotion from yeah. everyone has been incredible. Um, and, you know, that, that's why we nominated her. Now, with you stepping down and saying you've done your bit, um, it leaves a vacancy, doesn't we it? We need more foster uh, so care. What would you So what would you say? If you can look at that camera two, or camera one, actually, there and say to people who, who you need or who may be thinking about this, what would you say to them? I would say, I know it's a big thing, but don't be frightened of picking up that phone and just making that initial inquiry because you're not committing yourself to anything at that stage. It's literally an initial inquiry. You have to go through a process of assessment um, and you can dig deeper and find out much more about it then. But if it's something that you are considering, just pick up that phone and inquire. If, if you're in the area where I live, you can Google Amicus, because that's the agency that I work for. In the larger area, get onto your own local authority and you'll be well looked after. You're not doing it on your own. And I'm so happy that I have had the best job in the world oh. for 35 years. Well, and you deserve oh, your MBE, which Wonderful. you're collecting on March, March the 3rd. 3rd. Will you be there, Andy? Yeah. Well? Oh. All my boys. I can take three guests, apparently. Yes. So. It is a wonderful day. Well, listen, we salute you. We salute you, as all those children do, I'm sure, that you've shown them so much love and changed I, a lot of lives. I've been the lucky lives. one. Mm. Yes, well, they've been very thank lucky you, to Andy, have known you. Thank you, Andy, thank, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. For and enjoy you. Ibiza. Oh, I, I can't thank you enough. What a surprise that was. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. You're cheeky. You knew all the time. <laughs> 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 he nearly Ma blew our cover. Imagine if you fostered me. <laughs> I don't know if you've had your work cut she'd, out there. You'd have stopped at one. <laughs> <laughs> uh,